This is uh, Trevor Picky, and I'm going to be telling you about some really nice, uh, really fun we've been having working on putting twisty puzzles in the browser. Uh, this is work with Lucas Garrett, and uh, he gets most of the credit. He gets almost all the credit for everything that looks nice. And uh, what you see here is an image of two aliens contemplating a Rubik's Cube. Now, these are some silly aliens because they don't recognize the Rubik's Cube. And as we all know, almost all aliens in this universe have no problem recognizing the Rubik's Cube. Um, uh, it's, it's such a simple and, and basic mathematics lab, but they don't call it the Rubik's Cube. They typically call it something like the 43 quintillion puzzle. Now, why is it that all alien civilizations know about the Rubik's Cube? It's such a fundamental, beautiful mathematical object. It's just waiting to be discovered. You start with one of the simplest of the uh, polyhedra, which is a cube, and you color the faces, which is something we all do with our children's blocks, and then you start dividing it up. So in this case, we divide it up with cuts parallel to the face, and there it is. The, uh, So uh, when I say pretty easily, different people, of course. Um, there's no strange rules. It's pretty obvious looking at it, what the moves are, what you need to do, what the goal is. Even a prepubescent monument can look at it without being told, no, what needs to be done. Now, aliens, on the other hand, may have a slightly different perspective than, I, than we do. Maybe instead of working on cubic puzzles, maybe they like to work on dodecahedra instead. So a twisty puzzles, twist, Twizzle Explorer is there to help us maintain twisty puzzle parity with the aliens by making some additional puzzles available um, and enabling us to develop algorithms and speed solving techniques. So, oops, this is the auto mix. I meant to go to the mega mix, so let's remove a few of these cuts. And uh, this puzzle is known on Earth as the mega mix, and it's fairly uh, well known in the kids play with it and can solve it fairly well. Aliens, on the other hand, may go even one step further. Instead of making those face cuts be so close to the edge of the puzzle, like here, they may want the cuts to be maybe closer. So here's the Paraminx crystal. Maybe they don't want that. Maybe they want to go a little further, one of the star minxes, until they get to this puzzle. This is called the pentultimate. Let me tell you a little story about the pentultimate. I have been collecting and working on twisty puzzles for decades, and I just love them. I always go out and buy the latest, you know, uh, different variation, different shape mod, whatever, and I learn how to solve it, and I solve it, and I have fun with it. I share it around with my nieces and at STEM events and the like, but I always buy the cheap mass-produced ones because I know they're going to get dropped on the floor and they're going to break. So I never go into the very expensive 3D shape. 3D printed and carefully made ones. So the Pentultimate is one that was not available for a long time. And in 2014, um, Brandon Enright made a couple dozen of these by hand, 3D printed them and then polished them up and sent them out to a few people. And I was lucky enough to get one. I love this puzzle. I stickered it carefully, this beautiful work of art, and I proceeded to try to learn how to solve it. And, oh, it broke my brain. I mean, almost immediately, I got the puzzle scrambled, just impossibly scrambled. And I could develop algorithms for it, but I could never execute those algorithms fluently. So I'd always mess something up in the setup or something, and then the puzzle would go back to being completely scrambled. So uh, with Lucas, we started working on Twizzle and Twizzle Explorer. And with this program, I was actually able to carefully plot out my steps and then do them with the virtual cube at the same time as on the real cube. And finally, I managed to solve the pentultimate. So I'm hoping that other people, humanity will be able to keep up with the aliens with a bunch of additional puzzles um, using Twizzle Explorer.
So let me leave you with one more puzzle. So maybe even this puzzle is not enough for the aliens. I'm gonna show you a puzzle I call the do not make this puzzle. And we're gonna get rid of the face cut. And instead we're going to add a vertex cut and we're going to add, add an edge cut, both of these through the center of the puzzle. Now, there's a lot of pieces here. There's like 300 moving pieces or 400 moving pieces, I'm not sure. And maybe that's too many. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna restrict the moves. Instead of uh, allowing you to make all moves, we're going to restrict you to this vertex move and this edge move, okay? And you figure, well, that's not too complicated. How hard can this puzzle be? Well, with only those two moves, this puzzle attains 2.6 times 10 to the 155th states. That's so many states, and it's just impossible to solve by hand. I mean, the, uh, an optimal solution for this puzzle, a random position would take more than a thousand moves to solve. And a human solution would probably take orders of magnitude more because with all the computer search I've been able to do, I have not been able to find any short algorithms that only change a few pieces. This is the shortest one I've been able to find. It affects four pieces and it takes 12,000 moves. And it just, it completely scrambles up the puzzle as you can see. So there's no way to maintain your status as you go. So that's my talk. Lucas is going to continue and show you a little bit more of the technology and have fun in Atlanta, everybody.